So good morning, everybody. This is the Floyd County Board of Supervisors meeting for November 27th, starting at 9 o'clock. First item on the agenda is to approve the agenda. And I would move to approve the agenda as presented. Seconded. All right. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed. On to item two, public comment. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Okay. All right, item three, review slash action regarding approval of the November 13th and 19th meeting minutes. Move to approve those as written. Uh, seconded. All right, motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed. On to item four, review, review slash action regarding the approval of the claims. I move to approve the claims. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed. On to item five, which is not time yet, <laughs> so we could wait um, on item five. And we'd have to wait on item seven. Let's get to number nine. On to item nine would be the best one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll go with item nine, review slash action regarding resolution 32-18, <coughs> which is the issuance of the General Obligation Law Enforcement Center Courthouse Improvements Bonds, series 2018A. And the information was in our packet. Mm -hmm. And again, this is the issuance. It's 32-18, issuance of $6,010,000 of the General Obligation Law Enforcement Center and Courthouse Improvement Bonds. So is there any questions on this at all? We've been waiting a long time for it. Yes, we have. <laughs> <laughs> I'll move, move to approve resolution number 32-18. I would second that. Okay. Motion made and seconded. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed. All right. Let's move on to item 10, <clears throat> review slash action regarding the abatement tax interest and costs and void tax sales certificate number 2013-13156 on a mobile home. So Auditor Carr, any comments on this? We would need Frank in for this one. Do you have anything about it? <coughs> Um, Frank, this is Linda in the boardroom. Is there uh, any? Could you possibly come in? We're talking about. Okay, never mind. We'll see you in a little bit. <laughs> Bye. There was a couple of these too that we can cover when he's here. Should have been two attachments that was on that. Yeah, yeah. I'll share. All right, so thank you for coming. The discussion is on the um, abatement of tax interest and costs and void tax sale for that certificate of 2013-13156 on a mobile home. So that's the uh, question. So is there any comments that you want to make on that or any it's just, concerns? It's just it's something that's just kind of been overlooked and it needs to be 
removed from the records and if the mobile home was sitting on the mobile home park at Greenfield that was closed. Okay, right. Some time ago. Right, okay. And the amount of the mobile home tax is $384. Right. Okay. You removed or abate that tax interest and cost for the mobile home certificate 2013-13156. Okay. Does the motion need to include the um, the amount? The voiding the tax and certificate too? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. You did? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Then second. All right. Motion made and seconded. Further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed. All right, next item then is review slash action regarding resolution 33-18, naming depositories uh, for the treasurer. And again, would you like to just kind of walk us through that one too? Um, it's kind of complicated, but we have had, a, had two accounts at Two Rivers Bank in Burlington for some time. But at least I wasn't aware of them until less than a year ago. Um, but they need, they need to be included. And, and, and these two accounts hold the flex funds for our flex, flex employee flex account, flex men, flexible benefits account, and also uh, for our self-funding portion of our health plan. And right at this point, they're between seven and eight thousand dollars. In, in conjunction with this, I did send a letter outlining some further action that I think needs to be we need to be aware of in, right. in regard to managing those two accounts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which she did send that uh, a couple days ago, I think. Right. Okay. Um, any questions, concerns on this? Yeah. All right. Do we hear a motion then to accept resolution 33-18? We moved it through resolution 33 18. Correct. Yep. Second. All right. Motion made and seconded. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed. Okay. Um, do we want to go on to? The next one, which is item 12. Go ahead, which is, we'll just have you stay right there. <laughs> Thank you. All right, item 12, review slash action regarding resolution 34-18 for specialist position. And this was the resolution that was put together yesterday for our review. And again, on that one, I think in discussion yesterday, I know I I was looking at not approving <coughs> yeah, I don't know. the specialist position. I do like the one that Frank signed <coughs> to us last night or yesterday. With more job, job description. With the <coughs> yeah. Okay, so yeah. hearing no motion. To approve then the resolution. Resolution dies then with um, no vote. So then the next step that we want to take is for item 13 review slash action regarding the motor vehicle specialists or uh, yeah that particular position. So again, I do appreciate the update on the job description that you had put together. Thank you for doing that. And so the next thing that we need to do to take action on this is uh, decide how um, we want to, again, part of it was the position, the next part of it was the recommendation for the employee um, to now take on this position so that matches this job description that you sent. Um, you have called it now just for, it was a motor vehicle clerk one. <coughs> The status is a full-time non-exempt. 
And so there's two outstanding um, decisions to make, which is the wage that this person would be receiving, and then also whether or not it goes uh, retroactive at any point. So what are your thoughts on those? I would encourage that you take this the next step and have this same job description for so if this is a clerk one, you have two, three, and four levels in your office so that we can discern <coughs> and and every office needs to come up with those job descriptions so we have a way of most offices do have job descriptions. <coughs> I know we did ask about that yesterday. So I'm asking you, you have, this is one, you have two, three, four. <clears throat> the person that replaced mm -hmm. Sherry Carla, mm -hmm. was she considered there, there, there are other descriptions for the other positions, yes. If, if you want me to review So Sherry, that's the time next again. step is she, is, is Sherry a clerk? She's a clerk. Two, three, four. And she's just described as a clerk, a clerk at this point. Because okay. we had no reason to describe her in any other way until so clerk now, one. Perhaps, now perhaps we do. Yeah, right. Th that's what I'm getting at. Right. <clears throat> so clerk one is the top level? And the higher level is the higher clerk number. But I think what he's saying, he just has one motor vehicle clerk. I mean, well, I, you know. the one, two, three, four, that kind of stuff isn't necessary, relevant, I don't think, unless it's for how you want to schedule a pay. He's, well, again, he's wanting to identify using Lisa. the secondary road contracts as an example, you know, <coughs> there are levels of operators. Tied to pay. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm asking is one of the top is for the top. I guess that comparison, is, doesn't that all fit into the contract, the labor contract? The I'm using that as an example. Yeah, we, we don't have that type Which of structure. Which we don't have right. today. And I see your point too, there is only one clerk for a motor vehicle mm -hmm. clerk, so it's not multiple people doing that particular job, correct? Yeah, I, I guess I guess it's a matter of preference, I guess, whether you think that, I mean, if you'd establish two and three or, you know, whether they're higher or lower or... Well, you named this one one, right? Right, because I was searching for a name, which you wanted me to do. Because but of the pay scale, potentially, may you have like Sherry as motor vehicle clerk one and Lisa as motor vehicle clerk two. If that's, that's what, what I'm asking. Is, is that what your intent is? Well, my, my intent was so, to create a, a title that you would accept. <coughs> uh, I guess I haven't gone as far in the thought, pro thought process as, as you have if, if we are going to go that way. But I think it's bears further investigation and maybe, maybe we should establish establish it that way. I don't think it's a bad idea because again it's tied to pay. You know, so if there is a level that you're assigning to an employee, you know, it would be because of that reason that we're trying to establish mm -hmm. more of a tier mm -hmm. of wages right. based on higher amount of responsibility that goes with it. Right. But, but there would be more or less unique to the individual office, not enterprise-wide. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. All right, so with that, do we have a recommendation on then the wage? Because I know that your request was for $25 <coughs> an hour, mm -hmm. okay, and that it went, was retro, so. So you gave us comparison, but they were just, <coughs> end of year wages, what does $25 equate to compared to those other numbers that you gave us? I think I have dollar amounts in those. I 
That was what I was trying to print off just before. Right. <coughs> I'm going to do that. You gave us an update, and I was looking at some numbers from various counties. But right, and I, and I chose the, the three counties in the higher population and lower population. I did mm -hmm. get a response from five of those counties, and, and they do have a, a range, but they are close to that $25 area. I mean, I think that's obviously relevant information for you to make a decision, help you make a decision, I should say. Well, Madam Chair, after all the discussion, and it's gone on for weeks and weeks. Yes, and, it has. And I do appreciate your uh, looking into with the HR department uh, and the whole notion of a specialist. Mm -hmm. um, Determining wages for our employees is an important part of our job. It is. And so, um, thank you for that. Um, I think we're kind of back to where we actually started. Uh, the board still has the obligation to determine wages. We've been brought a, a new uh, position to us now. It's a motor vehicle courts one. Um, but I'm solely looking at it as an individual circumstances. This case, to me, stands alone. The next one that comes up will stand alone. And uh, the board will look at that. I've reviewed the uh, additional responsibilities that uh, uh, Lisa has taken on. I've reviewed the, the cost comparisons, and I think an increase in, in wages is justified. Um, I do agree that it, uh, you know, it's, it's a long time before we got the request after Judy's uh, uh, retirement. And so I, I can't make a motion that includes a retroactive pay increase going back to when Judy left. To when she left. Yeah. Um, but um, I do value the work of the employee, and I would move, I would make a motion. Get something on the table to discuss here that uh, uh, this modal vehicle clerk one position be paid at $24 an hour, which is less than the request, and that pay start at the next pay period. <coughs> I would agree with that, and I would second that. And <clears throat> that's kind of where I was leaning to, and the, and the request for the $25, I think, was t tipping it a little bit over, the way I looked at it, too, was 75% of even the salary, you know, of the elected official. So I was trying to look at something that was reasonable within that amount. Yeah. I, again, I think out of all of our discussions, I do appreciate and value the employee, and we've said that again. You know, it wasn't about the work that this person is doing, because absolutely, this work continues to need to be done. Like you said, it's a service that we provide, and we want to make sure that we're recognizing that job description, the work that that person is doing, and pay accordingly. So I would not disagree, I think, with that. So we have a motion for $24 an hour, and that it would start with the next pay period. You seconded? All right. With that, any further discussion? How do we interpret the next pay period, if I might throw that out, so there's no sure. ambiguity? Sure. It would be... Pay. We just got paid on the 23rd. Right. So the next pay period would be... The 7th. On the 7th. So if you want it retroactive right. to yesterday. Mm -hmm. Or do you want it... That's, 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 that's what I made yes, the yes, yes absolutely. The most current. Okay. Right. Okay. All right. Hearing no further discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed. All right. Thank you. Um, we are past the 915, so now we can jump back up to item 5, which is the public hearing regarding proposed urban renewal plan amendment. So we'll open the public hearing. 
Have we heard any comments on this at all, Auditor Carr? Um, no, no comments to it. I'm going to see if this is the one. Uh, no comments to it. I will just say that we did have the meeting with the um, the opportunity for the schools to meet, and um, the only. Uh, that's for the, we did a joint meeting with the city of Charles City since we both have the same amendment on the table. Um, and uh, the only person I heard from was uh, Mayor Andrews and he had said he wasn't able to attend the meeting but he felt pretty comfortable with what was going on and, okay. and had no issues. Uh, the, no representatives from the school showed up, um, which was expected yeah. for those consultation meetings they often don't show up but um, so I've had no uh, other than Mayor Andrews calling I've had no calls in support of or objection to the amendment. Okay. Have either of you? I have not heard anything. Okay. <coughs> All right if hearing no further comment on the this we can close the public hearing. We'll move on to item six, which is review slash action regarding resolution 30-18 on proposed urban renewal plan amendment. Now we move to approve 30-18 proposed urban renewal plan amendment. Second. All right, motion made and seconded. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed. All right, we'll move on to item seven which is the, we'll start the public hearing for regarding the development agreement with Charles City Area Development Corporation and authorization of annual appropriation of the tax increment payments. So again, have we heard any comments on this one? No comments in support of our objection to it. I have heard none, none from either of you. Okay. You do have a, in your packet, you do have a copy of the uh, area development agreement and it mirrors the agreement that was done three years ago. Um, same payment amounts. Okay. All right, so hearing no further comments, we can close the public hearing on item seven. We'll move on to item eight which is review slash action regarding resolution 31-18 regarding approval of the development agreement with Charles City Area Development Corporation and authorization of the annual appropriation tax increment payments. And I would move to approve 31, resolution 31-18. Second. Okay. Motion made and seconded. Further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed. For such a large agenda, we're moving. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm sorry, have you ever had two pages of, of an agenda? <laughs> I don't have two pages. I know, <laughs> but we have, I've shrunk the font down. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Make up one. <laughs> Just checking. Okay. All right, so we are on item 14. Oh. Yeah. Review slash action regarding family farm applications. I know. Our have brought these in yesterday. Um, Gary reported that there are 30 family farm applications that they believe should be approved and there are 13 that are canceled and they've been canceled for reasons such as the property's been sold. Which happens. Yeah. Which is just uh, That is the canceled. Okay. That's canceled. Yeah. These are the applications that are still valid. Yeah. Whoever makes the motion, there's 13 canceled, there's 30. Right. Okay. All right. I, I, I move to approve the uh, 30 family farm yeah, applications and, and delete this, cancel these 13 applications. They don't meet the criteria. Yeah. You're seconding? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, motion made and seconded. Further discussion? 
Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed. On to the next item, which is 15, review slash action regarding resolution 35-18 for debt and TIF certification. because we currently have just the one uh, debt to certify. Um, this is our road, our urban renewal area for the wind turbines. And um, I probably got a little long-winded on the resolution, um, but I just wanted it noted on that resolution also that, uh, so we probably have it in documents from June also, but um, we've made $473,635 in interest payments, and we've paid $2,235 in fees to uh, Bankers Trust, which one of those is that disclosure fee like you just right. signed for at a previous meeting for the upcoming debt that we have. And, um, but I also made a note in the resolution that um, <laughs> we did exercise the early call date on the original 2010 bonds and so in this reporting period for the debt is um, for 2000 uh, well, it could be anything up till today uh, but um, I just thought it was good to note in there that you did pay off those old bonds with that early call date so that added that to the resolution which I think it's good that you did add it and that they were refinanced with the new uh, refunding bonds. Mm -hmm. So, and so the other part of this that I, this, your second email from last night was the TIF paperwork that just met, mirrors what was put on here um, that I forgot to include in the packet yesterday, the first email. Oh, I see. Okay. With the same amounts. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. So with that. All right. Uh, make a motion to approve resolution 35-18, death and TIF certification. Okay. All right. Motion made and seconded. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed. On to item 16, review slash action regarding approval of the annual urban renewal report for fiscal year 18. That also was in our packet. So the annual urban renewal report is to, um, this is legislatively a task that was added Five, five years ago or somewhere around that, the legislators wanted to see um, summaries of what counties and cities have for debt and schools as well. And so this, again, just plugs in the same numbers. Uh, it lists all of your debt. Um, so on this one, we still have the two debts because of the report. This reporting period is through um, July up to July 1st 2018 so it's one year June or July 1st 2017 through June 30th 2018 and so this captures the <coughs> double debt that we have with the two different loan periods and uh, plugs in what we've earned in TIF revenue and um, um, so this um, this shows on the first page of it shows that seven million dollar number as what our fund balance is in debt service, um, and then um, what we've earned in TIF revenue and interest on the account, what we've received in uh, that reimbursement of claims is the uh, property, commercial property tax, uh, business property tax credits, and uh, the 113,000 represents the refund, the uh, 
Build America bonds that we had, the money that we received back from the IRS for those. It's the last time you'll see that on this report since those bonds are now paid off. And um, <laughs> that's it, it's just pages of that debt. That's good, that's good, right? If you have any questions, oh, are you going to go through more of it? Or? This is a report that's due December 1st. <laughs> and that's what I was going to ask when it's due, and then it's the same format that every county has to go through. What do you do? Every county, city, and school. Now, okay. is she building, isn't she buying the next? All right. The next year, okay. Yeah, yeah. Questions? Concerns? Hmm? If hmm. not, do we have a motion to approve? I have a move to approve. Second. All right, motion made and seconded to approve the annual urban renewal report for fiscal year 18. Further conversation? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed. Item 17 is review slash action regarding health dental insurance plans. Okay. Lots of lengthy discussion yesterday on this. And so, Auditor Carr, if you want to walk us through this document that you <coughs> provided. <coughs> so this is just an extension of um, yesterday's paper that you had, the large sheet that you had. This is just using <coughs> the same numbers that I had highlighted on this form and I've just extended out you wanted to um, improve the ending fund balance of um, the, the employee health care fund and uh, so the option one is just as what was proposed yesterday that shows right. the same amounts there also on the, the so the top box just shows the different options of the fund balance and then where it says budget rates, that's for the, the second item on your agenda to approve uh, what you would split. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, the options at the top are if you use the IGHCP Blue Choice Plan without the additional consultation and also the IGHCP Delta Dental self-funded option. And so, and then we talked about the other parts of health insurance, which are the uh, blood draw and the wellness incentives for employees. And so <coughs> this impacts the other part to increase your fund balance. So if you see option one, it's got the $811 for a single plan, $1,960.40 for the family plan, and included in that is the $16.28 for other. Again, that's what was on your sheet yesterday. Okay. And then crunching the numbers on that, as of yesterday, that put $121,140 estimated fund balance. If you increase that other, um, I've given you three other options for ending fund balances, hundred just Put them around 150,000, 175,000, and just shy of 200,000 uh, dollars, based on those rates that are on options yeah. two, three, and four. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I guess one of the things that uh, I mentioned yesterday is your option could be that you could just. Um, leave the $811 and the $1,960 and should you need to add money to that fund you could transfer money over from the general fund um, so I thought I would add to this sheet the budget impact if you want to increase this fund balance so uh, the very bottom line on this shows uh, takes just the increase uh, across all of the current number of health plans that we have today and um, the impact on the budget which this isn't just one budget because it hits general fund um, the rural services uh, 
secondary roads. So it hits multiple budgets, so it's not just one budget. So this is just a number that's overall the whole, all of the budgets that are impacted with this. So the increase just alone with option one, if you keep it as it is, has an, just an increase from current budgeting to 371,000 uh, $371, additional dollars. So it's just taking the $213.38 times 12 months times the, the number of employees that have that plan and the $374.40 times the 12 months times the number of employees that have that plan. Okay. And it's only the increase. It's not the total impact of health insurance on the county. It's just um, the increase portion from raising the rates from, from last single year. from 598 to 811 and family from...